hang on. The promise oh, was son, keep your doctor, you keep your plan, save $2,500 so a year. First of all, they're not mutually exclusive. Second of all, look, oh my the inflation for health care was skyrocketing. But you know what? When you ask uh, voters today, do they want to keep Obamacare? Sean, what do they say? You know the numbers. Okay. What Listen, do they say? I'll put, up, I'll put up the screen on Obama's promises. I'm going to repeat it. Keep oh, wait, 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 your, wait, wait, I'll you put up on the screen. Sure. Keep your doctor. Let's hang on. Keep your plan. Save, on average, $2,500 a year. Okay. Look at what it says. A million people, millions lost their coverage, their plans. Sean, we could spend this whole time just you listing details on Obamacare. Because Detail, we could talk, details. you know what, Mexico's oh. going to pay for the wall. Why We're can't you just say deficit. Mexico is paying for the GDP. wall? You want to know how? We got a better trade deal. Trump did no, that. No, we did it. Yes, no, we, did we did. Donald Trump doesn't even know how tariffs work. I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you some business How did you advice, become right? a billionaire? Do I need to buy you now, a calculator? So, so Sean, Sean, I'm going to give you some business advice. If you're going to negotiate, you don't fall in love with dictators that you have to negotiate with. Who fell in love with, with dictators? You love China gave worked. us more money than and they've when ever they don't given. Love you back, Canada gave us more worse. money. Western even Europe worse. gave us more money. Mexico, Japan. No, they don't. They didn't give us more yes, money. Are you talking did. about NATO? Mark, NATO, see, you don't even understand how NATO payments work. How do you? Either. That's just what they how say. How do you on, make? On, I watch you on, on Shark military. Tank. What, what happened during the def what happened to the deficit during the Obama administration and what happened to the deficit to the Trump administration, even though Donald Trump said he would get rid of the deficit? Hey, That's Mark, number one. Let Mark, me, I, whoa, whoa, stop. Let me one at a time. Whoa, one at a time. Biden Obama took on more debt than all 43 presidents and vice presidents before them combined. Fact. Yeah, and then what happened? And then what happened to Donald and his deficit? It has not. It just went straight. Okay, he's up. only been there three and a half years, and he set record low unemployment <laughs> for every demographic group. Years. And guess what? The worst pandemic since 1918. And Joe yeah. was against the and travel what has ban. He done? He's made it worse. He's made it worse because unlike you and I, oh. he won't wear a mask. He won't wear a mask. Be honest. Oh, be honest. Be honest. Sean, you gave Donald Trump the ultimate softball question. Be honest. And he Joe Biden's it lost it. He doesn't have a fastball, a curveball, or a slow pitch. Come on, Mark. Come on. You know Donald Trump does, can't answer your questions. You and every Fox uh, News interviewer gives him the easiest uh, questions, and he can't answer you, them. Why is that, Sean? How did Mark you Cuban a become a billionaire? I need answers. I got to go. The problem with Fox News spewing baseless platitudes at Trump's base all day is that there's no one to actually present facts to push back against them, which is why Sean Hannity seems woefully unprepared when the Shark Tank star began systematically debunking his talking points. All Hannity can do throughout this entire segment is bounce from one Trump talking point to the next, only to see every single one discredited by Mark Cuban. He claims that Obama had a higher deficit than every single one of his predecessors without acknowledging that Trump has had an even higher deficit than Obama. When Cuban brings that up, Hannity says, yeah, well, Trump had a pandemic to contend with without acknowledging that the disastrous effects of this pandemic were Donald Trump's fault. The reason we're not reopened like South Korea and Germany and Canada and Australia and New Zealand is because our government didn't take any steps to stop it. So it's not that the recession we're in has happened in spite of Trump, it happened because of Trump. Hannity even tries to claim that NATO is giving us more money because of Trump. Just so we're clear, that's not how NATO payments work. Getting NATO countries to pay 2% of their annual GDP doesn't mean we get the money like Hannity is claiming, it means that those countries are spending that money on their own defense. The problem with these right-wing talking points is that they don't even know what the things they're saying actually mean. And nothing shows the extent to which Hannity is doing Trump's bidding as much as the fact that the guy is still, still attacking the ACA. He's still parroting the same talking points that Republicans were spouting 10 years ago. But here's the thing, the American people support Obamacare, and now in 2020, it is more popular than it's ever been, with 55% of Americans in favor of the law. Even when Mark Cuban asks him point blank what voters say with regard to the ACA, all Hannity can do is fall back on showing his screen with his tired talking points. Because 
because just like Donald Trump, he has only one move, to attack Obama or any other Democrat they can point the finger at. The truth is that it's Trump who's hell-bent on dismantling Obamacare. Why? Because it's named after his predecessor, and he's predicated his presidency on destroying Obama's legacy. That's it. That's why even in the middle of a global pandemic where 130,000 Americans have died, Trump's priority is not to expand healthcare coverage, but to rip it away from the 20 million Americans who rely on the ACA all because he's insecure. But the most telling moment is Cuban calling Trump out for not even being able to answer the simplest softball question. Only days ago, Hannity posed the question to Trump, what will you do in a second term? And all Trump could conjure up was an almost minute long diatribe where, for some reason, he starts talking about how many times he slept over in Washington. Let's talk about a second term. If you hear in 131 days from now, at some point in the night or early morning, we can now project Donald J. Trump has been reelected the 45th president of the United States. Let's talk. How do, what's at stake in this election as you compare and contrast? And what is what are your top priority items for a second term? Well, one of the things that will be really great, you know, the word experience is still good. I always say talent is more important than experience. I've always said that. But the word experience is a very important word. It's in a very important meaning. I never did this before. I never slept over in Washington. I was in Washington, I think, 17 times. All of a sudden, I'm president of the United States. You know the story. I'm riding down Pennsylvania Avenue with our first lady, and I say, this is great. But I didn't know very many people in Washington. It wasn't my thing. I was from Manhattan, from New York. Now I know everybody. And I have great people in the administration. You make some mistakes, like, you know, an idiot like Bolton, all he wanted to do is drop bombs on everybody. You don't have to drop bombs on everybody. You don't have to kill people. Well, if that doesn't make you want to vote for Trump, I don't know what will. But here's the thing. It's not about the underlying facts with these Republican talking points. It's just about having empty platitudes to spout. None of it holds water, but Republicans like Hannity know that if they can muddy the waters enough, that the truth will be hard to see. And so his goal isn't to stick to any facts. It's just to throw a bunch of spaghetti against the wall and hope that something sticks. It's right out of the Trump playbook of just lying so much that hopefully the truth will be unrecognizable. The only problem being that when someone is able to actually push back, then it makes it abundantly clear what a con people like Sean Hannity are running. And luckily, it happened on his own show. If you like that video, please check out my brand new podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I'll cover the most important political stories of the week and interview major players in the world of politics. Available now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check it out and subscribe now.